All right, so the next part of this process is right now I'm just gonna grab a bunch of these meat chunks and we're going to slice them up into smaller quarters. And one thing to watch out for, depending on the size grinder you have, you have a bigger horsepower grinder, bigger little port to drop the meat in, you might want to size your chunks for the grinder. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're- This grinder has a huge tube, huge yeah. tube. We can probably leave these pretty big, but just we'll still- that whole thing in. <laughs> we probably could. So we're just gonna start doing this and throughout the process too, if we see some other stuff I missed before, I might just trim some of it off before I keep it up. How so. much do you trim? Not much? Not much. So this one would be totally fine, Trail. Right on. We'll keep, uh, we we'll could probably just uh, a smidge. Just a smidge of silver skin right there. You should have been a surgeon. Did you see that? Is that pretty skilled? <laughs> Same my first rodeo. Well, grab me a bunch grab of a good one. meat. I'll and help, I'll help you cube it up. We're gonna do the roast too. Just cube up roast. You want to cube this up and grind it? Yeah. All right. Does it matter how you cube it when you cube yours, or do you just slice it and chunk it? Go against the grain, with the grain, whatever. A lot of times I think these skinnier ones, trail, are kind of what the route I'm going for. Okay. It can be a little longer, but that just works really well. Then when I'm having a little stuffer tube, it's just easy to deal with it. So you leave it like that? Just leave it like that, yep. You got a tip to keeping your knives sharpened, Brady? What do you do with your knives at home, your kitchen knives? Uh, Anything special? Kitchen knives? Just like your knives, like if you're gonna cut like your knife at home for boning out. Can't remember what the company is, but I have a big like industrial electric one with little belts on it. Okay. And so I'll run all my knives to their left side, right side, change the uh, coarseness of the, the belt to eventually get a really, really sharp, durable edge. So I like, like them really sharp. Work sharp. Oh yeah, that's yep. actually the brand. Yeah. yeah. The big electric work sharp Yeah, one. those are great. I don't know, I might have to buy a set of these. <laughs> yeah, these things are slick. <laughs> this is one of the more pleasant experiences I've had trying to cut meat up and I'm only into it and a you'll few notice, like, minutes. The knives with a better handle on the back, just more grip, easier to clean up too when you're washing them. Mm -hmm. Rather than like a wood handled knife. What do you do with all your burger? What, uh, like what's, what's your go-to for burger? Like Hamburger you, helper? No, never. <laughs> Absolutely never. No? No. So all of these are all going to be ground with uh, like a mixture of bacon ends and pieces. Ratio to me really doesn't matter. I don't weigh them out. I just grab whatever I feel like I want to put in there. Usually I think it's around like 5 or 10% of bacon. Just adds a little bit of flavor, makes it stick when you cook it. A little bit of fat. A little bit of fat, good bacon flavor. And then everything I grind is usually with sage seasoning or some breakfast blend, which is like a maple or something like that. But to me, that's a little too sweet. Mm -hmm. So I just like sage. I think sage goes well with everything, especially a big old mule deer that's been, you know, hanging out in the sage in the winter range. Don't you think there's probably enough sage in this already? Probably, you can never have too much sage trail. <laughs> You'll notice too, throughout this whole thing, on my uh, deboning and this process, I try not to grab the meat with my right hand. Never, like you can see my left hand's obviously dirty. Right hand's completely dry and yeah. clean. That's when I'm holding the knife so I can actually grab it and I don't lose it and cut myself. Right. And this makes it, in my mind, a little bit easier to deal with when I can have this hand be completely dry. I thought that's because of the hand you wipe with. <laughs> you like that? Yep. Well, you did almost the whole thing, didn't you? Just like these big, thick pieces of silver skin. Do you that, those I would take out for sure. You, you cut those out. Yeah. All right. And that's where just separating the muscle and just keep working through it, and you'll eventually get them out. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty picky. Like when I do mine at home, like I try to cut as much silver skin out of it as I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to slow down and get some silver skin off. How long does it take you to do a whole, like a whole deer by yourself? Probably say four, four and a half hours. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Pretty, it might take me longer, but I usually got to plan on like a full evening, you know? The hardest part is we have a bunch of steaks too, and then I have to run it through the vacuum sealer. Yeah. And just portion those out, cut them nice. Some of my favorites are like I've taken meat before when I didn't have time to do it myself to a butcher. 
and like just seeing some of the meat that those guys get that comes out. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like they just drug it through the woods, you know, some, some folks. Yeah, if you do this once, and then if you ever take it to a butcher after that, you will definitely be giving them a lot cleaner meat because you know what the process is like, so you want to... Yeah, take care of it. Take care of it for them. Those are good looking steaks. I know. Does it hurt your heart to grind them? I'm sure I'll get some flack from it, but I'm eating it no matter what, so... Some deer I'll turn it to steak more if I shoot multiple in a year. Some will just grind. Kind of depends on what I'm feeling like, how much time I have. What's your favorite dish to do with burger? Uh, burritos. Oh, yeah? Chili. Yeah? Enchiladas? Oh, yeah. During this process. Okay. We're just gonna use three packages, so this is three, six, nine, roughly nine pounds, maybe ten, of bacon ends and pieces. And before I grind the first one, I like to take these out of the package. How many of these do you want to open? What? Where this is just two quarters, how many of these do you want to open? You want to I'll, probably double, I'll probably double that up. And so you do, want to do two of them? We'll do, we'll do all three with this. With just this? Okay. It's going to be a lot, but... Yeah, fair enough. And like I said, I don't ever really weigh it out or mix it. I'm just looking for whatever I'm kind of feeling like. Or if these are already thawed out and I need to use them, I really don't want to freeze them again, so I'm just going to... Use dump, it, dump it in there and use it, yep. Most small town local grocery stores will have it. It'll be like near the bacon, usually on like an edge side. Mm -hmm. And you can actually buy this in bulk a lot cheaper than you can regular bacon. You actually get the big chunks of it, hence the bacon ends and pieces. Or, you know, Walmart or anything like that. And while we have them like this, I'll just start doing the same thing. We'll cut them in really small chunks and kind of mix them in there with a spoon. That way it's kind of even okay. throughout. Yeah, this is a step I don't usually do. I don't usually mix bacon ends, and I'll end up, like, if I do a burger, I'll have to, like, mix an egg or put a little olive yeah. oil on it to get it to stick. But definitely add some flavor to it and some fat to it, and it makes great burgers. It makes great, great burgers. So that's another secret to my 4th of July burger. Yeah. Because you have to have this in it. A little bacon in. So then you're just going to get in here and mix it. Yep. I do have a spoon for you, Trail. I'll just get in there with my hands. Okay. I washed them. This is like one of those things when you're a kid at Halloween and you go to a, like a haunted house, you know? And they like walk you through them in the dark and they make you put your hand in something. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. You have all the Only this stores. would be actually terrifying if you opened your eyes and saw it. <laughs> uh, this is why I like having three. We're going to have to clean this one. Okay. Because then when we're grinding, we're going to grind that through the grinder and into this meat lug. Then after this process, we'll take my seasoning and dump all the seasoning in there and then change the plates, regrind it, and put it right in the uh, one pound tubes. So second grind, you mix it with the seasoning. seasoning. Okay. Cool. That's, we'll do the process. All right, so next step in the process, we have a giant grinder by meat sitting out here, and now I'm gonna run through the first grind process. So what I like to do, I'll show you the plates again. You have three different types of plates. Coarse, medium, and fine. Never use the fine. Coarse is the one I start with, just to get everything chopped up, and then we'll add the seasoning, and then I'll switch over to the medium one. Coarse is really coarse. Yeah, this is, that. this is really, you can do a lot of meat with this. This is a swanky grinder. Yeah, this is industrial. Top of the line. So when I'm doing this, obviously make sure all the parts are together. We did that earlier, but one thing I want to show is, always on the back of the auger, there's a little O-ring. You're going to want to make sure you have that O-ring. So when you clean this stuff up later, make sure you don't lose that O-ring. That's going to be essential on there. And then also I just want to make sure all the gears are lined up and put this together. And safety first, you have to make sure this thing's unplugged before you're... You don't want to put your hand in a grinder? You don't want to put your hand in a grinder. So make sure it's unplugged while you're doing the other stuff. And then you take the little, whatever you want to call that. Chinese throwing star. <laughs> Chinese throwing star. And on the bottom of these, I always have a little cutout. So that's going to go on the bottom. Everything's all centered up. And then we have the giant wheel on the front to lock everything in place. Looks great. I can't wait to see this thing in, <laughs> in oh, action. It chops them up real fast. <laughs> All right, so now we're just gonna load meat. And I like to use a giant spoon, because again, I try to keep my right hand as dry as possible throughout this. And then safety first, and stick your fingers up there. Yeah, gotcha. So I'm just gonna load a bunch of stuff up here right now. You can probably just come over here and feed this while we got it going. 
and just keep me keep me going. And that's why we're using the two meat lugs again. So all the meat's in here, and I'm grinding on this one so it's been clean and dried off. So let's move from one to the next. Here, you tamp, and I'll 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 feed it. Okay. You want me to run the pedal, or you want to run the pedal? You, the you pedal. better run the pedal. I better run it because I'm making sure everything's good. It's gonna take a little bit for the hopper gets filled up. better way to do it. Stick your fingers in there. It's going through pretty quick. Oh yeah, this thing's smooth. So now I suppose you want me to wash this and we're going to grind back into it? Mm. No? Mm. All right. So now we'll take this Move over to the side, switch to the uh, stuffer tube. We'll mix all the seasoning in, and then we do the second grind. We just put it right into the tubes. You're gonna just put it right into the tubes and into the freezer. Into the freezer. Cool. Tape it. Twist it. So I'll change that plate. Do you put that in there? They throw it away. No, I put that in there. You so do? Just, yeah. So a lot of times you'll have. Mm -hmm. Just a bunch of stuff that sticks yeah, in the front Yeah, like end. all this is just kind of sinewy looking and no, skin. Was, you just put that, that back okay. in. Huh? That stuff's okay, yeah. Well, that's probably the bacon fat. But if it was caked in there, like mm -hmm. I'll show you the next one, you'll see it. Some Silver skin. Up. Yeah. Then I do fine out. grind mine, and I know exactly what you're talking about. you got to clean the thing out yeah, about every three or four minutes. <laughs> so as you can see, this is what the meat looks like after the first grind through the big giant coarse plate. You could just run that again to the course plate if you wanted to, but we're going to do the medium plate. Yeah. It'll kind of finish it up. Get more of the bacon kind of chopped up so you don't have big bacon chunks when you're actually cooking your meat. And, I mean, you could use a small one, but again, we'll just do this one and I'll show you what it kind of looks like. Now, get everything put back together. Mm -hmm. O-rings in the back. Auger's all good. And now we add the little stuffer tube, which just slides on here, goes right in that little hole. Do this the correct way. Make sure it's in its spot. So the main purpose of the stuffer tube is it just makes it a lot easier dealing with the ground meat. There's obviously a ton of different ways you can do this. You can grind it all the way through, make your patties itself. Mm -hmm. and then either vacuum seal that or whatever you want to do. These little one pound baggies are really slick. You just got to shove that bag on the end. I'll grab another one. Those are great. Meet your maker. Yep. You just got the little labels for it, depending on what it is. Mm -hmm. I always like to just label roughly what it is and then the year. I always take it so I know what to do. You just when, kind to, of, when to pull them on my freezer. You and, just kind of fill it up to where you're full and yeah, usually it's probably about somewhere right here. So then all we're going to do is put this guy on there, put it all the way up, and then once you turn it on, we start putting some meat in there. We actually start filling it up, and the tube will start pushing back a little bit while I'm holding on to it. And then I'll stop it, and then I give it a little twist. What I'm going to do before we get ahead of ourselves is cut these seasonings open. This is prairie Pra sage. Prairie sage seasoning. Where so do you get that from? Ordered online through a company called High Mountain Jerky. Okay. No affiliation with them, absolutely love them. They're from Wyoming, small town, make awesome seasoning. So usually two of these per uh, 25 pounds of meat. So it's gonna be probably on the little light side, but that's okay. But take a smell of that. Mm, it smells good. Yeah, it smells really good. Do you just hand mix it in? No. No? No. Okay. We use the spoon. That you... Don't you like using your hands? Mm -mm. Why not? Stir it all up. This would be more effective with your hands, I think. But then the, the problem with it, with the, when we put the seasoning on, though, it gets all over your hands and it kind of gets caked up. Yeah. Now I'm doing this by myself. I'm just burning through a bunch of extra paper towels. <laughs> Gotta save the environment. So soap and water's for. So stir it all up. 
get a good mix, and I'm going to add a second one in there. You're going to put both in? Yeah. You're going to go heavy on the seasoning, then. Well, it's two packets for 25 pounds Oh, of okay. Gotcha. I'm going to buy this in bulk in, like, five pounds. Big, giant box of it. I think I could do this better with my hands. Do you want to try? Because I'll, sh I'll show you. Can I? Yeah, I'll, sh I'll show you the hand technique right now. I want to I wanna do the hand technique. All right, mix with your hands. Oh, yeah, that's better. Load that up. Yep. This is going to go real fast. The slow part is just putting in the tube and taping it. Yeah. So I like to put the bag on there first just to make sure it doesn't go through really quickly. You run the button. Okay. And as it's going, I just kind of keep my hand on it to help the bag fill up. And then when I pull it off, I just give it like a bunch of twists. Bring it over here. And it's done. Just like that. A little technique I did too, once I pull it through, because you're going to have a little bit in this back part, mm -hmm. I just grab it and like squeeze it as I'm pulling my hand away okay. and then drop it back in there. Okay. Okay. All right. So now we finished it and we have a bunch of meat in the tube. So the easiest way to do this is to take this apart. Out of the spoon, and you literally just push it all down through. This stuff didn't get ground, but that's okay. You get ground the second time. another pound out of that. Yep. So instead of just throwing it in the water and saying, oh yeah, that's a bunch of waste. All right, so that was a quick run through on the first round of how to process your own wild game meat from taking meat on the quarters, deboning it, cutting all the silver skin off, to cutting up into cubes, adding some seasoning and running through the grinder and putting in a little uh, ground meat tubes. Like Joe said, we got what, 20, 20 some pounds? Yeah, probably over 20, 21 maybe. I, can't, I didn't count them, but it seemed like it was close to 20. Yeah, so it's a pretty easy process, especially when you got two people helping. It goes through really quickly, and it's just an enjoyment out of the whole process. You take the animal, take it home, take care of it, and then you do all this work yourself. You can add whatever seasonings you want, whatever mixes you want. You can steak whatever you want, burger whatever you want. I would say it's worth buying the equipment. Yeah. Like, this is a much better experience than I get at home, even though it's not so bad at home, you know, if I've got the time to do it. Yep. I would say with the right equipment, you can definitely cut down the time and the frustration of, you know, cut and wrap mm -hmm. and freezer paper and all that stuff. This makes it super easy. So I would recommend spend the money, do it once and yep. get, good, get good, get good equipment. It'll pay for itself in the long run. For, for sure. sure. And then you know exactly you got your meat back. Yep. Big benefit to me. So. Any questions, let us know. This is the way I do it. There's obviously a million different ways to do this. But it's worked for me for my entire life of cutting up wild game meat. So we're going to get this in the freezer. One more tip when I put it in the freezer, though. I try to, uh, I don't try to stack them in a big ball. I'll try to, like, lay them out flat in the freezer so mm -hmm. they freeze evenly. Because mm -hmm. if you start stacking them up, some of the ones underneath, they'll be insulated for a little bit. And they won't freeze right away. So I try to lay them out flat. Cool. Freeze them. Good deal. Should have saved something to eat. I know. You can always tear in. I'm them. hungry. <laughs> and if you guys enjoyed this, stay tuned. We're going to be doing a bunch more of these meat processing videos. Some more how to do some steaks, some vacuum sealing, even some more wild game cooking. So we got a lot of things planned, and this is just step one of the whole process. So thanks for watching.